Okay, Holly, it's, yes, I can send it to you. Okay. Or I can give you a link or something. All right. So should I get started on this yet or no? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. okay. So I'm going to screen share and, and ask uh, participants to mute their mic and stop their video while I do that. And if you have a comment you'd like addressed later on, just put it in the chat and we'll get to that at the end. So screen share. Uh-oh, let's see. Okay. Uh, you should now see a slide of storytelling on the big winner class as an elective, do you? Yes, it's good. Great. Right. Okay, so I'd like to thank, thank Jean and Phil and Linda and the entire uh, camera club board really for keeping our uh, camera club so vibrant during COVID and inviting all of you to keep learning from us on um, the GVR camera club YouTube site. Today's, today's presentation is on storytelling um, because I'm addressing the photographers, of course, of Green Valley Camera Club, and they're all interested in photography, but really why take all those photographs? Uh, Joel Sartori, who is a National Geographic photographer said, it's to tell a great story that moves people. And what I'll address about this is the five variables that you need to decide upon when you're composing your story, motivation, audience, graphics, words, and vehicle. Uh, the potential raw materials, which will include photos, of course, and the essential parts of any good story, a hook or beginning, a middle that answers who, what, when, where, and why, and a closure or end, and also uh, don't forget the credits. And we'll talk also about the, the process of composition using a storyboard. So here's a simple one photo story. And it illustrates that a photo story can really be worth a thousand words. You see this story of, of two women, one old and one young. The older lady is looking at her herself in the mirror, but she's seeing herself as she used to be a young nurse years ago. And the younger woman is looking on and considering what happens to people and what help do they need as they age. This is another picture where one picture tells um, a story. Norman Rockwell is the painter of this one. And he wanted to share his view of post-World War II in the United States and help build a common culture. A lot of that he did with uh, Saturday Evening Post and other magazines. This is another famous uh, picture of Rockwell's. And again, the story he tells is an entertaining story showing the setting, communicating what's happening, capturing a bit of old time nostalgia. And it's one picture, one story. So all of you who are watching this probably have a story you want to want to tell and you need to ask yourself why what's your motivation do you want to um build people's knowledge and form them of something do you just want to share how exciting something was for you do you want to inspire them to go see the national parks um do you want to somehow instruct them on how to tell a story or um just make them laugh entertain them so today for the story that I'm going to tell about, I'm, I'm multitasking and I want to tell a story that will inspire people to support a project, the Ubu Shibosi project in Rwanda. So I need to inform them about that and build some understanding and also share the beauty that's involved in that project. Next, you need to decide uh, your audience. You, who wants to know your story and why? Why tell it? What's their attention going to be like? Do you want them to hone in on it? And do they have any time constraints that matter? Um, it could be you want to just tell a story to your family about your trip, or you might want to uh, tell about your grandfather who's soon no longer with us. You might want to teach your kids about um, how to use a map. 
whatever it is, whatever your story is, there's going to be a time when they stop listening and you want to finish your story before that time. So for my video, um, I want to look at potential donors who will support and encourage uh, working Ubu Shibosi women through their purchases of products or donations to their children's education. I figure I can't hold their attention very long. Probably 12 minutes would be max. Um, and I want, I'm going to present this to them on YouTube. So um, once you've decided on your audience, consider your entire story and compile uh, the resources you wanna use. You, you've got probably photos already. Um, you might have music, in my case, some music from Africa. Um, I ended up with some words from a magazine and select your vehicle. Do you wanna be like um, Rockwell and have one picture, perhaps in a greeting card, tell the whole story? Or do you wanna send a letter to someone with a photo of what you're giving them and tell them the story of that item? Do you need to write a whole book, uh, maybe a book to amuse your grandkids? I did one of those on the mine in Green Valley when my grandson was little and into trucks. Uh, calendars are also great ways to tell story because they're, they're inexpensive. A uh, gallery is simply a collection of, of photos on a theme or multimedia. Multimedia, of course, is um, different sorts of media. In other words, photos, uh, videos, sound effects, printed word, narrated word, and that's the one I'm going to use. And I'll also get into telling you how you can conceive of your story using a storyboard and what you need to do to edit. So once you have your story in mind, then you can select your vehicle, depending on how complex you wanna be. I'll be doing um, multimedia production, as I said, and besides the photos, video, and narration, the software I use, which is iMovie, will allow me to easily add titles and captions, transitions from one still to another, um, music and sound effects all to enhance the story. So choose your vehicle depending on your audience, uh, the, depending on the reason you're telling the story dependent on how much you want to supplement your photos with words and sound, how complex you want to be. Um, and I have slideshow here written off to the side of these other types of vehicles because a slideshow is essentially a book only that's presented uh, on a large screen to a group at once. And that's the big advantage of a slideshow over a book or the big advantage of a book over a slideshow is individuals can determine how long they're going to dwell on each page of your story. Choose your vehicle. And create a file where you gather all the things that you're going to use in your story. Um, photos, videos, words in a written word, perhaps music. And um, your graphics, of course, are part of your raw materials. My story, I had um, video that I had presented to Multimedia SIG, and it's, it's not the story I want to tell now. It's a story um, that, I, that I told to the three women that were working on Ubu Shibosi, helping them raise money by uh, demonstrating how to put together some quilt projects. So here you can see that video. Uh, it's just a minute or so. And that, that says it's about a quilt project, but of course that's not really what my message is. Where it was is in there very quick though. You can't really tell um, where Ubu Shibosi is. And I have um, my friends here in the United States working on these quilt projects, because again, this video was for that audience, for them to, to just enjoy our get togethers and what we did uh, to help, to help the, the women in Africa. 
here is my file of um, it's in it's in photos a lot of photo library called photos Mac thing and it's a portion of of my photo library that shows um, some of the photos that I gathered you can see down here there's one from um, my project with the three women in the United States but also there's uh, photos I got from a man who had been to Rwanda and had visited the sewing cooperative um, Ubu Shibosi. So I had a lot of photos at my disposal that didn't originate from me. Besides your visuals, you should consider your words. Um, select the type of words or sounds you want to use and how many words or sounds you want to use. Uh, for this video, I had some digital photos uh, with audio I had uh, that I had taken of the three, the three ladies here in the States. I had written script from a magazine. In iMovie, I had option to write titles and captions. I had option to add sound effects or music, which also can contain words. And since I want to post it on YouTube, I want to use royalty free music. Keep that in mind when you're composing your story. If you're going to pirate some music and just use it for yourself or some friends, like my original video, then it's okay to just use someone's music that you happen to like and have always listened to. But if you're going to post it on YouTube, got something that's royalty free so you don't have to redo it. I also uh, learned through Multimedia SIG that when I do my um, narration, I'm better off and my audience is certainly better off if I use an external mic. So you might wanna add that if you're going to do multimedia stories. Uh, I have my own sound booth, something that's uh, sound recording for doing my narrations. That works great for me. Um, some people who live where it's a little warmer, the lavenders use their sound, their car uh, my car would have to be running in order to uh, keep me warm enough to use as a sound booth, but my closet works fine. And then um, when I put the sounds, the narration and the music on iMovie, I end up with uh, audio track, which then can be edit edited and moved to coincide with my slides. Um, so you're ready now. You, you've kind of decided what's your motivation? Why do you want to tell the story? What's your audience? Who do you want to tell it to? Uh, what kind of vehicle do you use? Do you want to use? Do you want to just do a card or maybe a book? Or do you want to use um, um, a multimedia format? Regardless, a storyboarding process can be a big help in composing your story. A storyboard is often used by filmmakers to plan what shots or videos they want to take, but it can also be used to plan how you want to sequence your, um, your story. So this is a direct quote from Wikipedia on a storyboard. A storyboard is a graphic organizer in the form of illustrations or images displayed in sequence for the purpose of pre-visualizing a motion picture, animation, motion graphic, or interactive media sequence. The storyboarding process in the form it is known today was developed by Walt Disney Productions during the 30s after several years of similar processes being in use at Walt Disney Studios and other animation studios. I find... Uh, I'll never remember that. And it doesn't even help me conceptualize what a storyboard is. A uh, simpler definition I've developed is a storyboard is panels on which a sequence of pictures and key phrases are used to plan how the story will be told. So a simplified storyboard has panels and on those panels, you're going to put visuals and words. Um, one could have a very simple storyboard would have only four panels for uh, one for the hook or beginning of your story, something that's going to encapture your audience. 
one for the middle that explains who, what, when, where, and why um, you're telling in the story. One for a closure or end of the story that kind of wraps everything up. And uh, a panel for production information and credits. So if you think of a greeting card, like a, um, a Christmas card or a thank you card or um, a Hanukkah card, the hook is usually a picture, the front panel. Uh, it might be a snowman or a beautiful winter scene. And the middle of the card, pages two and three or panels two and three of the story, tell the viewer who, what, when, where, and, and why they're getting this card. For example, it might say, from our house to yours, we wish you peace and joy this season, the darlings. That would encapsulate everything. And the back of the card might say, this is brought to you by cartographics, or this is brought to you. My brother send, always makes his own cards. So it says, this card is made for you by Dean. Um, it could say Hallmark, it could say Apple, whoever produced the card you give credit to. So again, we're talking about storyboard, which is panels on which a sequence of pictures and phrases are used to plan how to tell your story. Um, sometimes those pictures haven't been taken yet and they are just sketched or even described by the person who needs to take them. Um, for example, in my Ubu Shibosi story, I might want a picture of um, the women actually using the sewing machines. So I, it could be I didn't have that picture and, I, and I actually I didn't at the beginning, I needed to look for it somewhere. So that was part of my storyboard. Um, phrases may be used to donate keywords. In the case of Ubu Shibosi, that's certainly one that's got to be um, utilized throughout the story. And the meaning of that word, which is to empower, empower is also key, uh, kindness, sewing, fabrics. So those were phrases that were key in my story, key elements, um, and also Rwanda, Africa, the where. So then the texture script can be used in sequence with the panels and it helps if you have them in something movable. This is a Snapfish storyboard. If you're making a card, a card would have a front panel, a middle panel, an end one and an envelope. This is a storyboard from an iMovie trailer a template. It's showing a portion of a movie storyboard and you see a series of panels that show actions or capture uh, visuals and uh, with them words. What words are you going to, to use as either text or narration to describe your story? This might look like a mess to you, but what this really is, is for me, it's my storyboard for my Ubu Shibosi project. On the left, there's text and uh, actually I'm literally cutting and pasting this. Uh, this was photocopied from a magazine I had permission to use that described the project. And I needed to reorder it in some cases, eliminate it totally, in other cases, add to it. So these uh, slips of text are movable and will be sequenced to the way I want the story told. Over on the right are my panels of pictures, my graphics. Um, one, I've got what I want is a hook described. One, I have what I want is a closure described. And then most of these are for the middle, the bulk of the story um, that says who, what, when, where, why. Uh, and they, they describe what I need. Like here's one that says what, fabric art. So for that one, um, I don't need to actually sketch fabric art. I know what their fabric art looks like. Again, let's think about a story you might want to produce. There's you and your audience, which you choose to tell it to, who you choose to tell it to. 
You includes your motivation, which you have in mind. Why do you want to tell it? Uh, then you have some graphics, mainly photos, but you might have some maps or <clears throat> signs or pamphlets, or in my case, a magazine that had graphics in it. And you have words, either words that you're going to tell to narrate or words like I did that were part of a text script. Um, sometimes if you're like Norman Rockwell, you don't need a, you don't need any words or um, you might want just to have a title. And then you have the storyboard where you arrange those things in uh, beginning, middle and end. You have your um, production and information. Don't forget to give credit where credit is due. And once you put all of that together, you can produce your story. Now, notice that this is kind of a circular um, flowchart. You can go back and forth between these uh, in case, for example, in the, you might be writing the middle of the story and you realize you've got to go take another picture of your granddaughter's piano recital to show what a great musician she is. You already had her sitting at a desk composing. You already had her playing her flute. But oh, you decide, well, I want to generalize this to more music. I want to get her playing piano. So you can go back and forth and add that as you compose your story. Same thing with your, your words. You might decide, oh, for that story, I want to um, record her actually playing something and use that for the background music for my story. So I better go do it. So those initial building blocks can be edited or altered or subtracted as you build your story. But they are the essential um, elements of your story and they'll help you compile and decide upon them uh, early on. It'll help you set your direction. Um, here, again, I, I wanted to put the power of kindness, Ubu Shibosi. It's Im important for me to have people recognize that very difficult name. And I had actually tried to get it changed, but that did not work so well. Uh, the people who chose that name are stuck on it. So, but that it, its meaning in power, I used uh, down here as the title for my show. Empower Ubu Shibosi. Beginning, choose your hook. It's got to introduce the subject, set the mood, set the scene. Um, often people telling a story will do something that will draw the audience in. For example, a departure. You're headed out on your trip or a sunrise. The new day is beginning or a baby. This is the beginning of my granddaughter's life or um, an initial event. Uh, this is the wedding. So it should introduce the mood um, also with its color and its font. Um, keep in mind, if you have music at the beginning, that's another good way to introduce the tone of your story. Um, the scene can be set with maps or aerial photos or iconic photos. Early on for the Ubu Tribozi project, I need to include a map. Uh, but the very first slide, I decided to use this one as a hook. I think it should be interesting to people. It's obviously a, a piece of humanity that is happy and productive and colorful. And um, those are the women of Ubu Shibosi. The middle of the story, again, go through it as you tell it. Make sure you, you've covered who, what, when, where, why. Choose your visuals and sequence them in a, in a um, order that makes sense. It might be chronological. It might be by topic. It, and then you can link the different topics with um, transitions. Sometimes you'll need a break in the action. Make that clear with transitions. Uh, keep some variety in your visuals, such as uh, close-ups and landscapes, or um, also though some similarities, keep your fonts all the same color. You want a, a story that maintains flow 
but um, includes the various topics you need to talk about. And choose your words, whether it's a narration or audio script or poem, um, whatever is least distracting from the visuals. And avoid redundancy when you're telling your story. You don't want the same thing over and over again. And when you have a story in mind, that's kind of difficult sometimes to, to do, but uh, very important. Because again, you want your listeners to pay attention until you're done finishing. They should check out after the story ends. So in my middle, um, I've got some, some pictures I want to include uh, where this is. This is Africa, and some will look even more like Africa. Uh, what Obviously, fabric art is going on here. Schooling is going on here. And um, over here, we have someone, obviously, in the United States um, doing some fabric artwork. Um, so I need to include both, um, both locations. This is a slide for the middle of um, the workshop in, at Ubu Shibosi, the Rwandan women actually sewing and picture of where this is in um, Rwanda in the jungles. In choosing my words, I, I showed you a little earlier some photocopies of magazine pages. You can cut and paste and edit so they fit. Um, but I need to include when I'm doing my story that it's women in Rwanda that we're going to support that they were uh, impoverished and or orphaned due to the 1994 genocide there. So that's why we're doing this. And how or uh, what is happening, we're empowering them through schooling and a sewing cooperative. Again, I want to maintain my colors um, with and my fonts throughout so that whatever text I end up using in my movie stays consistent. Um, and I need to sequence it in a logical manner. The end or closure of your story should summarize what uh, you've been telling or show a product or result of, um, depending on what your story is about or an arrival or a departure. These are all ways to show uh, you're done, you are done. In my case, um, I have, a, an encapsulated slide that'll be on the end that shows the women in Rwanda and actually has text that explains that this is a cooperative uh, group of women of, in Rwanda who are overcoming poverty through sewing and weaving. And then uh, a picture of the business card with of course the name on it, Ubu Shibosi. Um, also, I'll, I'll be having narration at the end and I want to include the words, your kindness can make a difference because that's the whole point of this story. Uh, I give credits. Um, in this case there, I did a lot of the photographs, but a man named Lian Wens, Len Wens, excuse me, also photographed. So I have to include him. I want to include my um, studio, Riverflow Studio. Um, I want to include uh, Missouri Star Quilt, who um, produced some of the text and also sell some of the products. So there's some how information here. And the web website addresses for both Missouri Star and Ubu Shibosi. The music, I uh, intend to use, again, royalty-free music, but I still will credit it. It'll be some music I get from Apple. I uh, want to include some software that I used, which would be iMovie, and the date that it was produced, which hopefully I will be done with this this month, March 2021. All of this stuff, of course, takes time and attention and is fraught with possible mistakes. So these are mistakes um, to think about and avoid, and mistakes I've made them all at various points. Uh, for one, wrong audience or forgetting yourself. Um, if you do a book 
it might be for family members. You might be actually giving it to each family member. Keep one for yourself, for heaven's sakes. I, I used to make books for my parents. And when they got elderly and had to move and so on, those books got lost and I still wish I had them. So don't forget yourself. Um, wrong audience. The, the movie I already made on Ubu Shibosi was made for the three women who participated. That's the wrong audience for this new movie. So have to remake it. Um, I think in, in the case of uh, travelogues generally, 20 minutes, or it, you either have to have a big shift in what you're presenting after 20 minutes or, or stop, because if it's too long, uh, people will turn off to your story. For um, my, my story, which is essentially, um, I hope, a high interest advertisement, um, I'm going to keep it less than 12 minutes. The vehicle or publisher, in this case, the vehicle is a movie, a multimedia presentation, but your vehicle might be a book. And we already went over how to choose which vehicle. Sometimes people though really have a great shot from somewhere and they want to make it into a slideshow and they, they just, it's wrong. They should make it into a greeting card instead. They just don't have enough um, fodder for a, a slideshow. Or publisher. Um, in the case of books, um, publi some publishers are quite expensive. So that could make a publisher not able to reach the audience you're targeting. Uh, in the case of YouTube, uh, I've got to make, make sure it fits that publisher. It is royalty free. Um, I picked YouTube because I want browsers, people who are just kind of surfing the web to be able to find that. People who are interested in Africa or interested in fabric art or interested in Rwanda specifically um, can find that. Also, um, there will be times with texts um, or captions that you could have your names or spellings incorrect. I've got some very difficult uh, words to spell, Ubu Shibosi being the most important, but Missouri, Musanzi, um, and spell check won't check won't find those. Uh, in another case, I was doing a book and I wanted the word manner, M-A-N-N-E-R, and I mistakenly typed manor, or maybe the spell check put it in, manor, M-A-N-O-R, and Spell check never found that. So spellings can be quite tricky, pay a lot of attention. Um, unpleasant graphic design. Uh, if you're doing a video, um, usually you want your slides, your stills that are part of it to be nine by 16. So there's a nice flow from one to another. That would be, if you don't, that could be a very unpleasant graphic design depending on how you work it in. Um, same with books, obviously layout is very important. Uh, by restrictive file type, what I mean is sometimes you could produce a video that is only will only show on a PC or will only show on a Mac computer. Um, be careful what you produce because you may want to show it on both or your grandkids might. So uh, don't use a .exe file, that's just PC, or dot, uh, but MP4 is PC, but also Mac. So check that out. And then uh, don't forget to give credit where credit is due. And um, I think that's, if you use music, make sure you credit the musician, even if it is royalty free. Um, if you lift from the web, credit that. Once you're done with all that, preview it. For yourself, look at the whole production, but also find an editor, somebody who hasn't already seen it many times. So there's fresh eyes and ears that can pick up mistakes. You know what you meant to say. Have somebody look at it that didn't know what you meant to say. And then revise. Give yourself time to revise for these common problems. 
Once you're happy with the revision, record it and save it. Uh, make sure you save it in productions for present and future use. If you're making a book, telling your story for, from, for a book, Yes, print it out, but also save all the file in case in the future you want to print it out again or you want to alter it. And that goes also with um, multimedia. I tend to save right on my iMovie projects uh, until I'm very sure that I don't want to make any little alterations. Uh, you can put movies in again and, and deal with it, but it's much more difficult. Again, uh, avoid when you save platform specific formats. You might have a Mac this year and three years from now, you're just gonna have a PC or the other way around. So pick something that's compatible with both. Um, and then save your raw materials in a folder because you might get inspired in another year or so to tell your story differently or to a different audience or with a different slant. And if your raw materials are all um, gathered for you already, it won't take you nearly as long. And then um, publish what you've saved, print your photo or card or calendar, publish your book or post or show your slideshow or movie. I intend to post mine to YouTube, um, but there are other uh, venues for posting obviously books and, and movies. Here are some resources. Um, you can come back to YouTube and see these. There, there are many, many more. There's a lot of help on the internet for storyboarding, for web design. Um, I tend to look at um, index cards, pencil and paper is my best re resource for storyboarding, but that's me. Um, there are storyboard templates by many companies. Twigtail is one. Studiobinder.com is another. Uh, Blurb is a um, book a book template and gives you book templates for for um, writing, both photo books and textbooks. And then, of course, there's um, Snapfish and Wing Flash uh, projects that are um, you can have done at, at Walgreens at various drugstores. Uh, these are all companies that will produce stories that you send to them. So uh, each of you, I hope, has a story in mind that you want to um, write, to compose. So think about your motivation. Why is it you want to tell that story? Um, think about the raw materials you have and also really the ones you need and what you can gather. What are the characteristics of your audience? And then decide, uh, is it best for you to use a book format or a movie format, slideshow? Um, see if you can get what you need for more words and graphics and then begin to arrange your uh, material as a beginning hook, a middle who, what, when, where, and why, and an enclosure. And again, don't forget the credits. Credits tell people how, how to access you, the producer, how to access the music you used and, and perhaps purchase it themselves. So don't forget that credits. Um, and then start your story, storyboard to put it all together. I hope, um, I hope you enjoyed that. That's the end of my presentation. I'm gonna stop screen sharing and see if we have any chats to answer. Um, hi, Jean, how'd that go? <laughs> that was beautiful. Uh, the sound was absolutely excellent. Um, oh, good. If you send me a copy of your slideshow, yep. we'll put it into a PDF format and share it with everybody who was in class. Oh, I'll try to do that. Yeah. Um, I think I can do that with file mail. Um, I don't know, you should, that's small enough, it should be attachable to email. Oh, I'll try it, okay. Yeah. All right.
And I have to uh, get a spiel in here. That was just absolutely excellent. Were you an educator in your past life? Because you did a beautiful job. <laughs> oh, yes. I taught, I taught and was a principal for 20, 30 years. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, number one, uh, all the stuff that Holly's shown you, if there's anything in there that seems to be technically difficult, check out the multimedia SIG. They meet Monday mornings at 10 o'clock. Um, you can register from the club's website and it will give you a link into the multimedia special interest group. And you can pick up a lot of the things that Holly mentioned today, almost by osmosis, just watching people do it. And secondly, it's just an incredible place to go to preview your stuff. I will often go there and throw out a multimedia presentation or a slideshow or something just to see what the other members, uh, the participants' uh, comments are. And a couple of them, I actually just said, well, I guess I'm not doing this any further. And a couple of them developed into some really nice stuff. Secondly, I don't know if you guys watched Showtime last night. We do that about six times a year. Um, it's a wonderful place to go and show uh, stories that you've made. It's just, it's a major ego trip when you realize there's a hundred and some people watching on YouTube and another group of people watching on Zoom and they're all going. Um, so it's interesting, join us. Oh, and just to put a plug in for projects, doing special projects. I was the uh, speaker series a few months ago and I did one on doing personal projects. And if you haven't seen it, take a peek because there's a lady in there. I've got some video clips of a lady who's done a personal project called the Veterans Project. And you really wanna see it and give you some motivation. So Holly, once again, thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Jean. It was that multimedia group that um, in, interested me in doing something uh, more useful <laughs> with, with this movie. So I'll let you, I'll let you know how it have, turns um, out in another week or so. <laughs> you have a post on the chat room from Jill Claver. She wants to know, um, do you recommend iMovie for video productions or um, something else? Okay. Um, I, I do. If you have a Mac, I think it's, it's definitely the way to go. First of all, it's included with your Mac purchase. Um, and it's to me, it's pretty intuitive, but I know it's not for everyone. Um, but there are people such as myself and Grace Pitzer at the Camera Club who are eager to help. And there's great YouTube um, tutorials on iMovie. And even there's some on the Mac too for, for iMovie. So the instruction is there. It's already synced with your photos library. So um, I, think, I think it's pretty easy to use. Uh, I had a couple people tell me I should do the next one up, but so far iMovie has all the functionality that I, I can handle. So that's what I use. And Bob, how to handle multiple segments over time? Let me explain just yeah, please. briefly. Um, <clears throat> I have a project involving a construction project that's going to go on for a period of time, probably many years, with short periods of activity. I want to start, but at this point, there's absolutely nothing other than a mock-up of a brochure I have that is cut and pasted. You know, it's, it's not even real yet. And I just don't know, with something like that, the best way to preserve a longitudinal experience so that someone, say, four years from now could tap into it. And I'm not explaining it well because I don't understand it. <laughs> okay. It sounds like uh, multimedia production might be good. Mm. You would want to start 
um, with a file and put, put your raw material into that file as you get it. For example, um, put a copy of your pamphlet into that file, you know, take a photo of it. Um, then whatever you're telling this, you think you're going to be telling this story about as you take video clips or photos, put them in that file. But also start thinking about, okay, what is that story you want to tell? Um, can do you know now? Yeah, I, I, I know pretty much what the very first episode would be. It would just be me talking, explaining what I'm going to try to do with pictures of, I've got five different models I've built and I can discuss each of the models and things like that. And then as I do the actual work over a period of years, I will make new presentations on each of the individual components. But I don't know how to tie it together so that it looks like a cohesive whole. Well, is your story going to be um, model building? Yes. Okay. So, uh, and who are you going to tell it to? I'm thinking a, a combination of other modelers or okay. people who would be just interested in that aspect of the hobby. Mm -hmm. uh, family members, not so much. Okay. So then, um, then I would talk with them. Uh, do you have a, a way to communicate with other modelers? Oh, yes. I mean, there's a lot of ongoing work out there right now. Okay. So you could ask them, uh, what would you like to see and hear about, about my modeling experience mm -hmm. or about somebody else's modeling experience? Mm -hmm. um, or I, may, may that's, you, you know that they're already interested in doing that. And so well, you just keep recording it. Uh, and, and putting things into a file until you have enough that you want to put it together. And, and maybe, um, maybe your story is my modeling experience. Mm -hmm. And you're going to include, here's five, five models that I've um, built. And, and who, who am I, you know, that you're a member of such and such a model club, perhaps, is what pertains to this. What here are here are the five models that I want to tell you about. Um, where am I located? I I don't know if that probably if you're in a model club, that's that's the where that pertains. Or you or the it's actually the location that I'm modeling, which is the important variable. Okay. So not where I am, but where yeah. we're the fact that I'm modeling in the Green Valley areas. In the what? In the, mm -hmm. I'm modeling in gr the Green Valley area. It's just in a different time period. Mm -hmm. Okay. It, so again, it, that's, it's that's what the bulk time. of your story is. You address, mm -hmm. you address mm -hmm. those same five variables. Okay. Yeah, I, I think, um, I was but if you think about it ahead of time, it will help you know what to capture with your photography along the way. Yeah, I was looking for a, a way to hook the presentations together though. <laughs> Let's, I do one this month and then I do one in five months, a new one every three or four or five months. How do I link them? You have to have a thematic uh, string is what it's called. You either do it with chronology. So, well, you know, I do it from the first date to the last, or I do it thematically. Um, you know, here's where I started my construction. I had an idea, but I wasn't sure it was going to work. And then I went to this and then I tried that and that worked and, and so on. And you know, my suggestion along with Holly's is, I just take a lot of pictures, a lot of video, stuff them all into a folder on my computer, 
And as this thing rolled around, the thematic part of it may show itself automatically. Okay. It may be your um, the fi the finished product, the five great models that you built. Yeah. But no, it sounds like you're going to be telling the story along the way. Is that true? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And demonstrating techniques along the way. Okay. So for me, as I, I'm not a model builder, but if I, well, actually I was for a little while um, as a kid, and I'd want to see your finished model. I'd like you to, the opening hook to be, look at this great model I built. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that'll be 10 years out. <laughs> It'll take that long to finish. Mm. That's it. You're stuck. <laughs> I know. You got your next 10 years planned out. Yeah, yeah. I guess you'll be busy for 10 years. That's good to know. <laughs> mm. Anybody yeah. else have anything? Unmute and ask. Uh, I guess not. Well, thank you, Jean. You're welcome. I want to just tell everybody we have one more meeting for this big winter class next uh, Tuesday morning. And then that's it. It's over. But you have to come next Tuesday because we're going to tell you how to do the evaluation for this class. And <laughs> you get a free certificate for taking the class. Oh, we want to make sure we want to make sure you get your certificate and we get an evaluation. <laughs> All we'll right, I will Tuesday. try to send you that um, that show, and thanks very much. Thanks. Yeah. We'll see you next Tuesday. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.